Hi friends, Whitney here. Welcome back to my channel, Whitney ERD. I have a secret to tell you guys. I recently did a three-day water fast. I know, it sounds a little crazy, extreme, and totally contrary to the fad-free, evidence-based nutrition information I usually share here. But bear with me for a second and let me explain. If you've seen my previous videos on intermittent fasting and time-restricted eating, then you know that the science on various types of caloric restriction is solid. It's pretty remarkable, actually. Caloric restriction can extend the lifespan of mice up to 50%. Decades of research have shown that fasting improves some measures of metabolic health in humans and prevents chronic disease in animals. I'm a big fan of what I call common sense fasting, simply putting at least 12 hours between dinner and breakfast. You can learn more about that in my intermittent fasting video. But water fasting, well, that's a different ball game. I'd heard of people going three to 30 days without food, and I always thought it seemed pretty insane. But the thing is, if you look at the science, it's not all that outlandish. While short-term fasting, 12 to 18 hours, has been shown to reduce disease risk factors in humans, one of the major purported benefits of fasting is cellular rejuvenation, aka autophagy, which doesn't occur in mice until about 24 hours of fasting. You've probably heard of dog years. They're shorter than human years. Well, mice days are similar. One day of fasting for a mouse is not equivalent to one day of fasting for a human. So if it takes 24 hours to increase autophagy for a mouse, it's going to take even longer in humans. So basically, typical intermittent fasting protocols, while beneficial in other ways, are likely not long enough to reap cellular regenerative benefits. Unfortunately, the research on prolonged fasting in humans is pretty sparse, but many fasting experts, including my former professor, Dr. Walter Longo, recommend it one to two times a year for overall health. So I decided that a yearly prolonged fast was something I wanted to include in my disease prevention toolbox. Three years ago, I did a five-day fasting mimicking protocol, which you can learn more about right here. Then I spent almost two years being pregnant and breastfeeding, so of course, no fasting then. This time, I wanted something shorter, and a three-day fast seemed to be a good way to dip my toes into the world of water-only fasting. Whether or not it was long enough to induce autophagy, I can't say for sure. Be sure to check out my next video, though, for an in-depth look at the research on autophagy and what we actually know about it. What I know, it was worth a shot to potentially reduce my risk of chronic disease. Both my maternal grandmother and her sister died in their 50s of colon cancer. Both my paternal grandparents suffered from heart disease, and my dad had a heart attack and a quadruple bypass last year. I, like the majority of people out there, have a family history riddled with chronic disease. I'm willing to try almost anything as long as it's safe to ensure I live a long, healthy life. So with that said, a three-day water fast seemed like a pretty non-invasive way to support my health. Stick around until the end of the video or check out the accompanying blog post for answers to common water fasting questions. Now I'm going to show you how my experience went. Here is my three-day water fasting diary. Good morning, friends. It is day one of my three-day water fast. It's 9 a.m. right now, so it's been 12 hours since my last meal and I am feeling pretty hungry. <laughs> but I always feel hungry in the morning, so that's pretty normal. Uh, my last meal was some cookie dough soy ice cream, which I'm kind of regretting now because I've found that the later I eat at night, the hungrier I am in the morning, actually. You would think it was the opposite and that's kind of why I had the ice cream last night, I was like, I wanna get in all these calories before I'm gonna be fasting, but it backfired. So anyway, I'm sitting here enjoying my breakfast, a mug of hot water. I was not able to have my usual morning coffee, despite what you may have heard from other people fasting. It's really not a good idea to have caffeine of any type from coffee or tea while you're fasting. The whole point of fasting is to give your body and your organs a break. So while you're giving your digestive system a break by not having calories, you're still activating your liver by consuming caffeine because your liver has to detoxify those caffeine molecules, break them down, eliminate them from the body. So you really want to pretty much just drink water. I know it sucks. Nobody wants to do that, but if you want to do it right, that's what I recommend. I'm hoping that this hunger feeling will subside in the next few hours. What I'm really nervous about is the uh, headache that I'm planning on getting from caffeine withdrawals. So far, so good, but I think that's because I haven't 
hit the limit of <laughs> the last time I had caffeine. Basically what's happening in my body right now is I'm in the post-absorptive phase. That happens from about three hours after your last meal. So anytime you have an overnight fast, when you um, stop eating at dinner, wake up in the morning, you actually get into this post-absorptive phase. And what happens during that phase is your body no longer has nutrients from your food, like glucose, to fuel energy. So it begins to break down your glycogen, which is found in your liver and in your muscle cells. And glycogen is the storage molecule for glucose. So we're dipping into those glycogen stores right now for energy. And glycogen stores can last for about 24 hours for the average person. It really depends for athletes. If you're carbo loading, then you probably have more glycogen stores. Or if you're used to fasting, maybe you intermittent fast. Had I not eaten that, nine o'clock at night, it would probably take less time. So that's another reason I kind of wish I hadn't eaten so late. I would love to be entering ketosis sooner because that's the worst part of this whole thing. Today, I have several meetings, some work to do. I planned it this way because I was really hoping to have things to take my mind off of the fast. So we'll see how that goes. The next two days afterward, I've cleared the calendar though because I know it's gonna get a little bit tougher after this first day. So it's two o'clock now, I'm in the office doing some work. I've started to feel progressively worse throughout the day. Not horrible, but not great. I've got a little bit of a headache, probably from the caffeine withdrawals. The hunger kind of comes in waves, so I'll feel really hungry and then it'll subside and I won't feel hungry at all. And that's probably because my body is producing ghrelin, which is the hunger hormone, because it knows we're in this post-absorptive phase and knows, hey, you need to get some food. We haven't had food in a while. So that keeps kicking in. What I'm looking forward to is that your ghrelin levels will significantly decrease once you're actually fasted. So that's why a lot of people say the first couple days are really hard because that's when your body's still fighting back. Once you transition into a fully fasted state, um, your body starts to work with you and the hormones uh, are not so crazy. I've been hanging in there, drinking lots of water. I went out and got um, some electrolyte water. It's important for you you to make sure that your sodium levels and other um, important nutrients for fluid balance don't get out of whack. So an electrolyte water provides you with that sodium, potassium, magnesium that will, will keep your fluid balance in, in order. Some people might end up drinking massive amounts of purified water that doesn't have any minerals in it and that could really put you at a potential risk of of fluid imbalance and of overhydration, which ends up making you lose lose more sodium. So I got a couple of bottles of that. I actually despise water bottles. <laughs> if you follow me regularly, you know that I think they're just a scourge on our um, society and our environment, but I didn't really wanna have to try to make my own home electrolyte concoction. So I have a few water bottles. I don't usually use them, okay? Just keep that in mind. So it's about six o'clock now. I'm in the kitchen putting together Caleb's dinner. I'm feeling iffy, I don't know. It, go it comes and goes. I'm pretty hungry and having to make someone else's food is not very helpful, but I'm hanging in there. All right, I've made it through my first day of fasting. It's about nine o'clock at night. I just washed my face, put on my PJs, tofu life, brush my teeth, and I'm sitting here enjoying a nice cup of hot water. In case you're wondering, yes, you still want to brush your teeth while you're fasting. Even though you're not eating food, your mouth has a microbiome of its own and bacteria can still build up on your teeth. Plus, it just tastes really nice to have something other than water in your mouth. So I've been feeling pretty good this evening. A little tired, a little bit hungry, but overall pretty good. Hoping for a good night's sleep and hoping tomorrow doesn't get worse. So it is day two. I woke up feeling pretty awesome actually. I had a good night's sleep. I didn't have a headache. I wasn't hungry. I was pretty amazed because I expected to wake up feeling like crap. However, uh, the day has quickly devolved. <laughs> it is now 10 a.m. and I am still in my pajamas. I just got back in bed. I'm gonna put on some Netflix because I am struggling hard. I've been feeling really weak and dizzy, uh, kind of like I have the flu. So just like shaky, 
Not good, not good at all. Additionally, I've had some acid reflux, so I struggled with GERD, um, acid reflux, since I was like 13. And a couple years ago, I was actually able to go off the pills. I think just leading a healthier lifestyle in recent years helped me correct that issue. But during my pregnancy, the GERD came back with a vengeance, and now it's, it's coming back pretty bad as well. It's likely because my stomach is completely empty, yet it's still um, producing acid. And so there's nothing to slow that acid down from coming right up my esophagus. So that's not good. <laughs> and just overall feeling tired. No headaches, surprisingly, um, especially given that I'm a coffee addict and haven't had any caffeine in, gosh, how long has it been now? over 36 hours hoping it gets better i scheduled a massage for the afternoon something to take my mind off uh, what's going on and cleared the calendar so luckily i don't have any work today uh, my mother-in-law's got caleb over at her house and just gonna hang in there so it is one o'clock now and i am happy to report that i am feeling so much better i rested i relaxed a little bit I rode the wave and it passed. So the flu-like symptoms have mostly gone away. I'm not feeling as dizzy or as weak, no headache, so things are doing good. I'm a little bit hungry, but you know, that's to be expected when you haven't had food for this long, but I'm doing good. Good enough to go outside and walk Mr. Chow. Might do a little gentle yoga flow in a little while and hopefully make it through this day. So I have made it to the end of day two. I'm just sitting here having some dessert. <laughs> Real tasty, huh? And I'm actually feeling better than ever. I think this has been the best I've felt the entire time. It looks like my body's fully transitioned from the early fasted state into a fully fasted state where I'm in full ketosis. I haven't tested my glucose, so I'm just I'm just guessing, but based on how I feel and based on the time period, basically from about 18 hours to 48 hours, your body is still in the early fasted state and that means that it is breaking down muscle protein in order to uh, create new glucose for your red blood cells and your brain because they can't be uh, fueled from ketones. Uh, however, after about 48 hours, once your body fully transitions in into ketosis, your body then starts to release fatty acids from your fat tissue and break that down and use the glycerol backbone. So if I'm, I'm getting too sciencey, I apologize, but fatty acids are stored with uh, three fatty acids and a glycerol backbone. And when they're released from the cell, um, the fatty acids can be converted to ketones and then the glycerol backbone can be converted to glucose, which is what your brain uh, needs to thrive. It can be fueled partially by ketones, but it also needs some glucose. Anyway, long story short, once that process has, has been accomplished, you start feeling much better. Your body's working much more efficiently. So that's where I am now. I'm hoping it continues tomorrow. This morning when I woke up was the worst that I've felt. So hoping tomorrow morning I don't wake up feeling crappy again. But luckily I'm, I'm feeling nice and uh, sedated this evening. I know I hear from a lot of people who have fasted that sometimes you can't fall asleep because your brain's just so wired. Uh, I had no problem falling asleep last night. I definitely feel more clear headed than I usually do at this hour, but I can feel uh, my melatonin starting to kick in and I'm hoping I will have a good night's sleep. So wish me luck. Good morning, friends. It is 5.45 on my third day of fasting. No food at all. I woke up really early this morning, which is pretty unlike me. I usually sleep in every second I can, which means till about six or seven um, when my 16 month old son wakes me up. Okay, there he is now. He just knows, he knows when I wake up. It's crazy. I feel like he has some spidey sense for me. Anyway, I'm up because I couldn't sleep. I woke up, my mind was racing. I think I'm just really ready for this to be over. I woke up a few times in the night to go to the bathroom. But other than that, I'm feeling pretty good. Um, a little hungry, which 
feels normal yesterday. I was hungrier earlier in the day, uh, but my head is feeling clear. I don't have any of those flu symptoms. I'm hoping to actually get some work done today. It's 10 a.m. now. I am in the office doing some work and I am feeling great. Um, I know I said it last night, but I think this is definitely the best that I felt through this entire fast. My body is working on all cylinders. My brain is firing rapidly. I'm feeling clear headed, no headache. Yeah, things are good. We're in the home stretch. Guess what time it is. It is nine o'clock at night on the third day of my fast, meaning I've officially made it 72 hours without any food. I know, I can't believe it myself. It's been really good today. As I said earlier, I, I felt pretty awesome all day. My brain felt more clear than it has any other day and probably more clear than it does on most days. And that's not surprising. Fasting has been shown to increase mental acuity. So once you get past that um, nasty transition phase and your body is in a fully fasted state, it's pretty normal to feel pretty, pretty good. I've had slight hunger all day, but again, it's, it's really not something you notice that much. As long as you're distracted, I was doing work most of the day. You really don't think about it. Although I am a dietitian and a food blogger. So a lot of my day was spent looking at scrumptious meals. And I will say that's when it's the hardest. When I see pictures on Instagram or when I'm making my son's dinner or when my husband says, where do you want to go to dinner on Friday night? Those are times when I'm like, okay, I'm ready for this to be done. Otherwise, I think I could have gone longer. I actually am gonna go a little longer. I'm gonna go till tomorrow morning. I really recommend eating in line with your circadian rhythm. So uh, despite the fact that the night before my fast, I had ice cream at nine o'clock at night, usually I recommend people stop eating after dinner. Um, so I don't see any reason to go um, eat right now. I think the best thing for me would be to break my fast at breakfast. Good morning, friends. It is 7 a.m. on the fourth day of my fast. I really wanted to come on here and eat my first meal or first bite of food with you guys, but unfortunately, I already broke my fast. At about 3.30 in the morning, I woke up and my mind was racing. I was like a kid before Christmas when you like can't sleep because you're so excited about your presence. That was me about my food this morning. So after tossing and turning for about an hour, I was like, I'm not gonna get back to sleep if I don't get something in my belly. So came in the kitchen, I ate a banana and a scoop of peanut butter, and I was able to go back to sleep for two hours. And yeah, that's how my fast ended. I've seen on here a lot of recommendations for people to break their fast with like juice or soup or something, something light. I don't really see the nutritional necessity of, of a liquid to break your fast. I think definitely something light is probably a good idea not to really overwhelm your stomach, but your stomach is a freaking mean machine. It can handle a lot of stuff. It hasn't forgotten how to work in three days. So if you want to have solid food for your first meal, I think it's totally okay. All the enzymes are going to come right back. I wouldn't advise you to go eat a huge greasy cheeseburger. That might make you feel a little nasty. Might make you feel a little nasty even if you're not on getting off of fast. But yeah, so now I'm actually having a proper breakfast. <sighs> Got my first full cup of coffee. Boy, does it feel good to be back. My husband was like, oh, you're not gonna just stop drinking coffee now? And I was like, um, why would I do that? So yeah, excited to be back with the love of my life, Java. And now I'm making breakfast for the fam. We've got some waffles in the iron and I am super, super excited to eat and feeling good, feeling proud that I, that I accomplished this. Um, we're ready to get back to normal food. And that was my three day water fast. It went surprisingly better than I assumed it would. I think the biggest thing this experience taught me was how much my mental and emotional desires really drive my food behaviors versus physical necessity. The average person actually has enough body fat to sustain themselves for about 30 days of fasting. So while fasting does cause some unpleasant physical side effects at certain points, the biggest challenge is the mental aspect. Would I do it again? Definitely. But next time, I'll be more prepared with what to expect and how to reduce some of those side effects.
If you're interested in learning more about water fasting, I'm sharing more info over on the blog, including answers to common questions about fasting like, is it okay to drink coffee? And do you need electrolytes? Which I talked about briefly here, but I'll go more in depth over there into the science. And be sure to subscribe so you don't miss my next video on autophagy, the body's cellular recycling process that biohackers are constantly talking about in relation to fasting. I'll be sharing what it is, how we can increase it in the body, and discussing whether a three-day water fast is actually an adequate trigger. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. I'm Whitney, thanks for watching.